If you're superstitious about shattered mirrors, be prepared. Hey guys, it's Chief from the F Word here to review the BBC One and Netflix collab. It's Matilda Gray, a very proficient cellist, ready to do a show, and something had happened to her mom earlier on. Her mom shows up, goes to give her flowers, pieces out, Matilda follows her, and only to find that she kind of stops and slits her own throat. Kind of a pretty crazy experience when you have no idea why. So Matilda tries to figure out why. It leads her to the Welsh countryside, to this place called Dean House, and she finds that her mom is connected to a 20-year-old case of a missing girl named Karis. She eventually starts meeting all the other players involved, and we kind of have a whodunit, what's going on, psychological horror thriller, with lots of busted mirrors. So I love the character of Matilda Gray. When that initial moment happened, when her mom committed suicide, there was utter shock in her that felt very real. I would imagine that's a very difficult thing to pull off well as an actor or actress. Even better was the scene after when she's sitting there mourning and crying about what happened. She did such a good job that I felt uncomfortable being there because this is her moment. This is something that she's going through. And I felt it off screen. Like, I'm like, I shouldn't be watching this because this is just for her. Like, it's, it doesn't happen too often with me. And so that was very well done. Overall, her as a character was written well. She was written intelligently. She was written with a sense of curiosity. She continuously kept that feeling of mourning throughout. And the more and more she discovered about this 20 year old case in relation to her mom and everybody else around her, she was just not prepared for what's going on. And the more and more she found out, as most of these things go, the less and less you know. All the other characters, really good, really creepy, really weird. You're kind of not sure as she is who to trust by the end of it and you ultimately feel like you can't trust anybody. And so it does a good job of setting up those pieces. The Dean House was something you couldn't trust. Yes, it is a house, villa, giant, whatever, but that thing was crazy. It was like a character on its own. Tight corridors, lots of doors in general, hallways, that whole thing. But the way it was shot really made you feel uneasy about what's to come. Every room was just a little bit more off than the next. As it goes up and down and throughout the whole house and around the courtyards and everything like that, you just feel uncomfortable, which was really cool. Making that almost a character on its own, at least that's what I got out of it, was the music. The sound design in this I love. They incorporated the fact that she's a cellist into the soundtrack by having a very heavy cello presence in there. And... Unlike some horror that decides to go with the quick cuts, like, you know, your classic psycho and you know, the stabbing scene with the ring, 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 ring. It goes with more of that gradual tone that a cello does have, that real bass kind of building a foundation and building upon the levels of sound that are there. It's like her own internal sound that's going on. Like, we're hearing it. No one else could hear it, but she's got it in her head. It seemed like it was very personal. And it worked really well as everything was going on, building more and more intention. And they also, regarding the 20-year-old case, incorporated the weird horror aspects, paranormal aspects of that with the sound as well, giving its own faceless thing a theme song. And it was really creepy when you hear it first kind of seeping in, you know things are not going well. For whoever is on screen. In general, I'm a huge fan of when just sound and what's going on link together perfectly. And this did that really well. Especially the fact of, yeah, you're going to have the cello in there being prominent. Because she is a cellist. And having that be the central kind of foundation to build all your tension from. And lastly, I would say the cinematography is really good. It is very bleak. It is very morose. There are like scenes with the forest and in houses and in the town and everything like that. And it looks really interesting the other thing i noticed is that they use shapes in a very cool way the way that some of the shots are done especially one of the opening shots it's an overhead shot and you see just so the the, the simplicity of the shapes and it looks just very cool with what's going on and they don't do it throughout the whole thing but when it does come in i thought that was really cool it's something i picked up you may not pick up the same thing but if you do cool i don't think i have anything really bad to say about this it is a slow 
burn. Um, it is very bleak and very morose. I reviewed something called Collateral not too long ago. I'll put it at the end of this video if you want to check that out. That one was also touching on some bleak stuff, but it allowed itself to be light when it could. This one is just, it's really heavy. It's really kind of depressing to watch. It's not overly scary. There are some scary parts to it. Being the horror aspect is more of how it's presented versus what we're dealing with. I wasn't really scared watching it, but because of that nature, it did give you like that really bleak kind of thing. So this may not be for everybody, depending on what you like, um, because it is that really slow burn and there are some long scenes and long dialogue and all that stuff, which personally I like. If it's done well, I felt it was done well here, but again, it does take a while for things to go. Luckily, it's kind of a shorter series anyways. So I would highly recommend Requiem to a lot of people, especially into if you're into psychological thrillers with a little bit of horror, that whodunit thing. It's got a lot in here. The performances are good. A lot of the shots are good. Like I said, the music is on point. There's a lot to really like about this. And in this case, not really giving us a full-blown reveal worked well with this. In some cases, you do want to actually physically see what is causing the horror paranormal side of things. But in this case, they didn't. And I thought it was really good because it created something that some shows don't do, where it created doubt in almost everything that was going on with our main character. And I don't, I'm obviously not going to spoil anything, but you're kind of like thinking, what's actually real and what isn't? And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go back and rewatch this again because I can now recall when I finished it, seeing bits and pieces of things that might change my overall opinion of the and what it actually means so that was really cool so that's my quick review of requiem let me know in the comments below if you had a chance to see it i would love to hear from you you can find me on twitter at the f words g you can email us at the f word podcast at gmail.com make sure you're following entertain facts on instagram and until next time i'm g and i'm out